Let's get over to our man, Mr. Steve Rhodes, as we do each and every Monday at 20 past the hour. And don't forget, folks, Steve has an amazing newsletter, Mastering Probability. Now, it's very easy to get Steve's newsletter. Come over to our website at TFNN. Go into newsletters. You see on the right-hand side, you can get it for one month for $149. You get it for six months for $6.95, which is a savings of $199 at 22%. And you get it for one full year for $11.95, which is a savings of $593 at 33%. Now, they all come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, folks, okay? So the bottom line, you can test drive it. It works for you. Fabulous. And for some reason it doesn't, guess what? 29th day, you just say, okay, you know, until next time. Steve Rhodes, what's going on? Well, you know, I, uh, I I just checked just before I came on the air to see what time the game started tonight. Yes. 920. 920. 920. I, 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 that's way past my bedtime. Me too. I know. Uh, Bummer. Because yeah, that so, shot at the end was phenomenal, wasn't it? Oh, my goodness. You know, what What a, really, what a game. I know. Uh, you know, and, and, and for a game to end like that, look, you don't, you know, whichever team you're pulling for, it's either good or bad. But but as just simply a sports enthusiast, how great was that? Totally. Not that, and, not that they lost, you know, but because uh, I was obviously pulling for them. But how great of a game was that? Oh, no, there's no doubt. And, folks, if you didn't see it, there was no time left. The ball was in the air. San Diego State, State one by one. They were down yeah. 14. And the thing I just think about, Steve, the pressure that these basketball players <laughs> must be in is insane. I mean, I, I, Everything but, is like down down to thirty seconds, sixty it, seconds. It, it is, but the talent the talent is really good. Yeah, uh, I think the games has been it's been one of the more fun uh, seasons I think to to watch. Um, if you watched any of the college basketball during the year, you during the year you saw all kinds of upsets as well. So it's not really that surprising right. out here. But um, I imagine that the game is on at nine twenty. I don't know if it was always scheduled for that, but maybe because it's a San Diego team playing and they want to get the uh, oh, right. you know the TV revenue. Um, well, everyone on the East Coast is gonna be asleep. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> we I'll anyway. watch a little. I watch a little bit. I'll of say, it, no, I. I I, as soon as I hit that couch, I know I'll try to watch it, but I know what's going to happen. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So, hey, I thought we'd talk about the S&P or really a couple different things here. Uh, so this chart here that we're taking a look at, we've looked at it in the past. Very appropriate now, as you were talking about on Friday, we had some swing points taken out with volume up there. It looks like we should be headed higher. If we take a look at the S&P 500, we can clearly see that we are in the favorable seasonal cycle. Now, folks, the red vertical line, that shows us where we're at as of today. Some other interesting uh, data that these folks here from Seasonex are providing. Like, if you ever want to know for a 95 year period of time, what day is the worst day of the year for the SP 500? It is clearly Mondays. But Wednesdays, those are have been over over on average have been the best performers, followed by Friday and then Tuesday. The other thing, if we take a look at the average return by month, um, you know, we had a decent March. April is one of the stronger performing months inside of the SP 500. The most, uh, the, the strongest month. Over a 95-year period has been July, followed by December, and just right behind it is uh, is April. So we're in a favorable seasonal cycle. We had some volume come into the market on Friday. I think that we mark the market does move higher in through the early part of uh, May out here. So that's the S&P 500. If we take a look at the monthly, so these are monthly charts here, Tom, for the NDX and the semis. And the one thing that I noticed was that both of those two indices closed above the February high. That's a bullish message out here. The second thing, folks, if you're if you're looking at these charts, watch us on Tiger TV, you'll see a green squiggly line that's referred to as the oscillator and change line. Now, the cool thing about it, when it's green, it's a it's a positive indication. But when price is above it, it's very bullish. So we have from a monthly standpoint, a very bullish outlook right now inside the NDX 100 in the socks. And as you know, and as you've taught us, um, you know, those two instruments will typically lead the markets higher. So whereas the other industries hadn't uh, closed above. Uh, the uh, green asset and change line on a monthly basis. These two did. So that suggests to me that the market should move higher. If we're looking for a price target, the Dow should target the top of its descending trend. So this is kind of interesting because, you know, we've had nice market rallies out here. But if we look at the actual cash Dow chart, Tom, it's still in a descending price channel. So, you know, price is likely to go target that level out there. Or And so when I say that level, folks, it's really that descending red channel line and also the horizontal 
uh, primary trading range line. That's up at 34.152. So I expect that that's where we will see price get to. The question is, do we close above that? If we do close above that, this is a, a weekly chart that we're looking at. So if we close above that on a weekly basis, it would be hinting at us that we've got a breakout going inside of the uh, uh, the Dow, or at least we've got a, a real change in trend here. So will that act as resistance? I think it does re react as resistance this time around, Tom. Okay. And the reason is because this is a chart that shows the advanced decline oscillator for the New York Stock Exchange. That is panel number two. And here, when we get above the plus 150 reading, this and th what this is doing, folks, this is looking at the advanced decline line. And it's determining the difference between its 39 and 19 period exponential moving average. So that's a technical reason. For our purposes, you don't need to know the details about how it's computed. You just need to be watching the plus 150 and the minus 150 area. That's where you get into for the general markets, overbought and oversold. So really in a overbought uh, condition right now, and that has to work. So as we're moving up into a significant level of resistance, you know, that descending price channel, that's why I say I don't think that it will bust through it this time. Um, of course, it, it can. But overall, I'd say with regard to the equity markets, they do look like they want to move higher. We should see some kind of pullback or retracement. Maybe it's just a two day deal out here. And then the market should continue to move higher. If there's new information that gets revealed to us, well, subscribers will know about it. Uh, folks that listen to the uh, Trader's Ed show in the morning, you know, we'll, we'll certainly make them aware of that. All right, let's move on to gold here. You were talking about gold. You were talking about the large consolidation that it's been in. If we take a look at its 54-year uh, cycle out here, March has really been a thorn in gold's side. If you take a look at it, it's been the overall worst-performing month. Followed then by June, which is not the best, and then a little bit in October. But right now we're into April. We've got gold that's performing well. Here, Tom, you know, I don't have really an overbought reading out there. We just have that large consolidation, that large range, the top of its profile, something for us to take a look at. And then gold, if we take a look at gold and the other major currencies out here, it's hit new all-time highs in the month of uh, February. Okay. And that bodes really well for gold priced in dollars. It says we will make new all-time highs at some point in time. Doesn't, you know, invite us to the party, tell us when. That's where you and I have to use our, our, our technical knowledge to identify where that's at out here. But gold is, is very strong. Um, a little bit about the newsletter. We don't talk much about the newsletter during this segment. Th during the segment, the first section of the newsletter is always providing key areas to watch uh, intraday out here. So it's kind of like the play-by-play. -play. And this morning, it was looking at the 60-minute time frame charts, which each had topping patterns. We provide. I provided the subscribers. This really helps the day traders or anybody just trying to navigate and understand what the markets are communicating to us. Sure. So I, I start. I start the letter off that way. Then we go into showing the current market conditions. And this is for multiple time frames. All all anyone has to do, and this is the primary, this is every sector in the S&P 500, the popular ETFs, the equity futures, uh, other futures that are out there, and it helps you to identify exactly what the market condition is. So this is really helpful for managing your longer term portfolios that identify support and resistance from a daily standpoint, identifies where there's tops and bottoms out there. So a ton of information, as you say, the third section lays out the daily message of the primary markets, Tom, which includes basically this section where I tell people exactly what these instruments are doing, where they're headed to, and the reasons why. Huge, absolutely huge. Folks, it's very easy to get Steve's newsletter. Come over to our website at TFNN. When the to newsletter, you're going to see Master Probability on the right-hand side. Hit it, and you are off to the races. Steve, you have a great one, a safe one. Of course, we look forward to the show tomorrow. Thanks, Tom. Take Thank care. Thank you. Stay right there, folks. We'll come right back. We have the Dow. The Dow Industrials are up 330. Nasdaq's down uh, 57. S&Ps are up 14. We'll come right back. If you want to take advantage of this